Well, England were bad in Mumbai against South Africa. Michael Afton, how bad were they today against Sri Lanka? Worse, probably. There was uh, one or two excuses in Mumbai in terms of heat and humidity that severely impacted the performance there. But no excuses here. Outbatted, outbowled, outfielded by Sri Lanka, who played very well. But this was an abject performance from England. When you interviewed Joss Butler, did you get a sense that all was a bit too much for him at the minute? Well, I had a sense that he was very distraught at the end. You know, England have come into this tournament with great expectations. They're the double world champions. This is a storied group of players who've played great cricket over a long period of time. So it's a, it's a little different from some of the bad World Cups of the past because there weren't those expectations there previously. Um, and this is so far below the standards that Butler himself and his players would set for themselves, you can only imagine his disappointment. Have you ever known a side as experienced and as talented as this England side being completely out of nick from almost 1 to 11? No, it's a puzzle. Um, this is a, a terrific bunch of players and confidence has just kind of whittled away really. It started badly with the opening game against New Zealand in Ahmedabad. It went worse against Afghanistan and from that point onwards England lost a bit of faith in themselves. They lost faith in their strategy, the all-rounder strategy, which they changed in Mumbai, made three changes there, and then reversed and went back to it here. So players sense that uncertainty, I think, and there's been a lot of uncertainty. But the bottom line is individuals are not playing well enough. No batters in any kind of form, really. Um, so you can talk all you like about the selections, and, and certainly the toss was a big error in Mumbai. Um, but the individuals have not played well enough and that confidence now looks at rock bottom. Does it feel like the white ball side needs a reset, the 50 over white ball needs a reset because they've just handed out a load of central contracts, some multi-year? Yeah, it feels like this particular 50 over side is at the end of their cycle and that's not to mean everybody will be cleared out but there will clearly have to be a significant regeneration. You'll have people like Harry Brook becoming a central part of the middle order and Gus Atkinson becoming central to the bowling lineup. The complication is, of course, they've got a World T20 next year. These world events come around every year, so it doesn't leave a great deal of time for, for that kind of radical regeneration. And the other problem is England's scheduling at home, the domestic scheduling, which the 50-over competition has been kind of relegated to a second 11 competition. So the chance for young players, if they're in the Test Match team, and the T20 side and the 100 to play 50 over cricket is very limited. So the selectors have got a limited view of who's doing well in 50 over cricket. And also in the last year, because of scheduling again, this England team haven't had their first choice team out in 50 over cricket. And therefore those failings that have been there over the last three weeks that we may have seen ahead of the tournament have been camouflaged a bit. Mathematically, England not out. Realistically? Well, realistically, they are. Mathematically, they're not. But matters are out of their own hands now. Um, and given how they're playing, it's very hard to see. You know, they've got a game against India coming up uh, in Lucknow on, on Sunday, and it's hard to see you know, them getting past India. Um, they look aside low on confidence, uh, and it does look like the end of the tournament for them. But as you say, mathematically, not the case. Uh, you know, there could be a whole host of results go in their favour. A miracle could happen, and somehow they get a reprieve, but it's highly unlikely. But Athos just said, up next, India.